All right, the bye week is over for Florida State. It's time for football, and it seems like it's been a long time. It has. That Friday night against BC. Now they go to Demon Deacon Country. Good afternoon. I am Rick Ballou, folks, and friends and enemies alike refer to me as the truth teller. You can get me online. Just go to uh, 1010XL.com. You can string our show. We're on each and every day, 3 to 7, sometimes 3 to 6 here in the fall, on the home of the Jacksonville Jaguars as well. You can get me on Twitter. That's B-A-L-L-O-U, 1010XL. All right, for Florida State, an off week. Pretty much everything out of there was good as far as injuries. Um, looks like Lowe Featherston is going to be able to return uh, for the first time this year. Again, he's a freak at 6'7", 225, 230 pounds. A guy that can really give Florida State an added push off the edge. He was projected to be a starter before the injury. Overall, Florida State's defense has been real good, particularly with what's going on with that defensive line. Also, Hodgkins has done a nice job uh, being all over the football field next to Terrence Smith. Looks like he will now be the starter. Uh, Northrop, who is still battling back from that knee, thought played much better in his third game of the season than his effort against Boston College. Overall, I think everything right now with the defense is fine. I'm hoping for a little bit more out of Derwin James as we move forward. All right, nine straight Saturdays of football. I mean, it's going to be a lot of work. You need some depth. I'm hoping that James gets himself a little bit more involved overall defensively for FSU. Perhaps the only bad news that came out of Tallahassee uh, this week was the expected return of Chad Mavetti as well as uh, Cole Minshew, who the thinking was that there would be more depth on that offensive line, which has clearly been the biggest problem so far this year for Florida State. Both have had setbacks. I don't know if you can expect either one of the two to be ready for Wake Forest, and that's disappointing. I would like to have seen them both get some reps. I know Minshew had a nice run uh, in the spring as an early enrollee before the injury at center. Uh, I figured that he would be the guy to get there because it hasn't been a good beginning of the year. Uh, for Martinez, but apparently Hofield is back, who got four starts there a year ago. He's been working out there. Eberle's been working out. Minshew's actually been over at a guard position. A little bit surprised by that, but again, I don't know if he'll be able to go uh, coming up on Sunday, or excuse me, Saturday. Uh, with Mavetti, he's out of shape, and that's alarming. It, it is, because he had a whole year under Rick Trickett. He had a whole year under Jimbo Fisher um, as a red shirt. And now he's a redshirt junior, a guy who's got two years left to play football. Got to play this year, you know. Then you got next year. You would think that he could add a lot there. Size, strength, experience playing in junior college. Also up there in age a little bit more. You would think that physically he'd be a little bit stronger than some of the redshirt freshmen that Florida State are playing right now. So we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, Golson learning the offense. Jimbo pretty outspoken about his development. Uh, this past week when he did meet the media, also telling us that McGuire is close. I don't know if he's sending a message to Golson through the media or if there's anything truthful to that. Could we possibly see a situation where McGuire comes in early now? I hope not. I mean, you decided to go with Golson. you got to stick with him now. Florida State has not been able to put teams away like B.C., like South Florida, what that means, unfortunately, is that McGuire hasn't gotten any mop-up time. He hasn't gotten the opportunity to play late in the third or in the fourth quarter, uh, which I think is so valuable at the quarterback position to get the man some reps. If anything happens to Golson, either with an injury or if he just doesn't play well, he, he's yet to turn the ball over. But if he doesn't play well in one of these games, uh, then you can turn around and go to McGuire. But um, so far this year, just the opener. That's the only time he is actually been able to play. All right, the Demon Deacons, you go to Winston-Salem, for crying out loud, they have a berm here, okay? People go to the games, they lay out blankets, they bring picnic baskets. Uh, guys and girls kiss each other for the first time at this berm. This cannot be where you have a college football game. We have 35,000 there, 40,000 there. Say what you want. When things started getting bad for Florida State during the end of the Bobby Bowden tenure, there was nothing worse than Wake Forest. That 30 nothing monsoon in Tallahassee to this day is one of the worst efforts I have ever seen a Florida State football team give. Wake has won four of the last nine. It's so easy to overlook the Demon Deacons because Miami is scheduled next up. Word around Tallahassee is if the Canes win Thursday night 
against Cincinnati and Florida State holds court Saturday against Wake. ESPN and game day will roll in the God's country for that matchup. It's very easy to look past. I'm thinking with 15 days, they can't, can't possibly be the case. By the way, Dave clausen has got a pretty interesting group here. John Walford, a quarterback right out of Jacksonville, had an ankle. He did not play last week uh, against Indiana. Looks like they are going to go with um, Kevin Hinton again, who led Wake Forest as well in rushing. Florida State has had a lot of experience against dual quarterbacks in the past, including early on this year. So I think that favors Florida State. Let's face it, they're a better team. Get in there, punch them in the nose, get out of there, hopefully no injuries, and then it becomes Florida State, Miami week. All right, my name is Rick Ballou. I'm on with you each and every day on 1010XL. Uh, you can stream us at 1010XL.com. Uh, you can get me on Twitter. Just go to Ballou, B-A-L-L-O-U, 1010XL. And if you're a Jaguar fan, uh, you can listen to the Jaguars radio broadcast. We're back from New England in one piece. We go off to Indianapolis uh, coming up this Sunday. And then a trip to face Jameis Winston and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in two Sundays. Until then, have a great week. Have fun with your family and friends. And we'll talk to you next week live right here from Baloo's Sports Bar.